All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me, Ms. Anthony? Yes, I can hear you, Mr. Wilson. I cannot hear you. So let's see. We can fix that. That's my problem. Okay. All right, still can't hear you. You can't hear me? My volume is up. And it says that everyone can see and hear me. Huh? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. So I think we are up and ready and running and ready to go. All right. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Doing, doing great. So I'm going to switch the screen here and welcome everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the first episode of the Business Banker Boss. My name is David Wilson, a managing principal of Fund You Up. We help small and mid-sized businesses get funding when traditional bank financing is not available. I'm excited right now to be doing our first episode. So this is episode one of the Business Banker Boss, where we uh, where we talk about the business bankers in our community uh, who are really doing the hard work to help the small business community. We want to learn what their story is about, how they help uh, the business community, how they differentiate themselves from other bankers that, that might be out there and maybe some success stories uh, that, uh, th that they've experienced uh, in their careers. Um, I don't want to be the one speaking uh, mostly here because this is about our first business banker boss. And I would love to introduce Mrs. Jack Jacqueline Anthony. Welcome. Good morning. Hi, David. Good morning. How are you? Good and good morning, everyone that's out there. How are you all doing? Great, great. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So you told me that we can go to Jackie now. <laughs> <laughs> right? Basically. Okay. 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 All right. So, so um, Jackie, we're gonna, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we'll let we'll let Jackie uh, um, tell her story. So what I what I want to what I want to start with is um, let people know kind of kind of how you got into why you got into banking. So um, banking was the accidental career for me. Um, I did not you know come up thinking I wanted to be a banker. Um, or really having anything to do with numbers. Um, as I was growing up, I always knew I wanted to help people, but I wanted to do it more on a counseling side. So I, I wanted to be a psychologist and you know that's what I went to school for um, at Western Connecticut State University. But um, you know, as I was coming up, you know, I started to, you know, realized that I really didn't have a strong understanding in finances. See, my parents came from Panama and, you know, coming to a new country, they were really more focused on making sure that their kids went to school, had a better education and had better opportunities. And that's really what my parents were focused on. They weren't focused on things like getting us out of a small two bedroom apartment in Brooklyn, New York. They weren't focused on, you know, um, the the credit card utilization and how to properly use that and not damage your credit. Um, or properly maintain your accounts. These weren't things that, you know, in our community were stressed to us. What, stre what was stressed in our communities was basically, you know, um, go to school, work hard, and just do better. But no real foundation of how to get there. 
no real education on how to accomplish that. So I was the first person in my family to attend college. And, um, you know, I already started off on the wrong foot because I was not, I was taking out all these loans and um, not really understanding what I was doing um, with that until I got into banking and I realized I already have all this debt, you know, and I already, you know, um, and I've already started off on the wrong foot, you know, and as I started with banking as a part-time teller, I started to learn from other bankers how to really manage and handle my finances better um, financially to be in a better position. And this is something that brought me to um, my career now. Okay, awesome, awesome. Okay, so so you feel as though you're you're bringing that to the the customers that you're you're working with that background mm-hmm. and that, that kind of drives you to mm-hmm. to be the best you can be and help them be the best they can be. Mm-hmm. So when I'm working with a client, no matter how big or you know or small they think you know their um, their accounts are, I don't care where you came from. My whole focus is to understand what you understand financially and educate you on how to um, make it better, you know, for your financial situation. You know, I've worked with um, small business clients from their very, very beginning, from their startup, you know, um, consultate, con- consulting with them on their you know, how to set up their LLCs, what documentations are the banks looking for and things like that. And then once they're established, we start delving into now let's see how we can grow your business, you know? So, and then I work with, you know, big corporate, you know, big corporate leaders as well in how to transition out and um, how to um, continue to grow, you know, or just maintain, you know, the level of presence that they have in that community. So, you know, it doesn't matter what background you come from. And I feel like because I come from such a humble background, to me, I'm not focused on how big you are. I'm focused on what you want. Right. That makes sense. Um, So what I'm hearing you say is that it's really not about transactions when it mm-hmm. comes to uh, uh, be, being a business banker, having a relationship as a business owner, having a relationship with a business banker. It's not about the transactions. Mm-hmm. It's, it's about it's about the relationship because you mentioned um, helping them grow. Mm-hmm. Um, when, and I think a lot of people, when they when they think of banking, you know, I come across a lot this a lot in, in my business. Um, it's it's very transactional. Speak. Could you speak to th- that versus the uh, relationship part of it, and and maybe share a time where that relationship maybe caused you to do something that really showed your value to to the client. So um, I had. So let's talk about the perception of bankers, right? Um, the moment you hear the word banker, you think of someone with a um, corporate suit on, uh, mostly male, and you know briefcase, and you're sitting in this big old office with his leather chair, and um, he's being a product picture, right? He's talking about a certain type of product. He's start- talking about. Um, a certain type of loan or a certain type of checking account. And it's always, you know, the highest end of it too. It's not something that actually fits. It's just what he can make you buy into. And that is kind of like the perception that we have. So unfortunately we have experienced banks that have done that, right? They've been in the news. We've seen them. Um, We hear about them every day. They're still in the news. And so this has caused a lot of people to have apprehension of about what a banker really is um, and what a banker should be to them, especially when it comes to helping them grow their business. You know, so there's a stereotype that, you know, uh, we have um, what I love. There was a commercial out there and they said it so perfectly. Banker cellarosis, you know, um, we're here to sell you a product. We're, 
And we're not car salesmen. We, I'm not here to sell you a car. I'm here to sell. I'm here to find a financial so solution for you that's going to help you reach the financial goal that you yourself have set for yourself. I'm not doing anything except helping you get to the goal that you establish for yourself. I'm not creating that for you. You've already done that when you come to me. All I'm doing is providing you with um, different ways of doing it, you know, and um, and not being a product pusher. You know what I mean? And I think that's the that's the biggest thing. I had a um, I had a business client. It was um, a. They owned a historic landmark here in here in Richmond. And, um, you know, they really didn't understand as long as they've been running their business. They really didn't understand um, how, you know, lending worked and, you know, how, um, you know, using a piece of collateral can help save their business. You know, they didn't understand that. And so. Um, this was maybe a four to five month process. And the reason why it took so long was because, again, I was not looking to push the product. I was looking to help them understand what a financial solution that I was um, providing them was how that was going to help them. And so at the end of the day, you know, right before COVID um, started, you know, the deal was done. Uh, they were in a better position for after, you know, the solution I provided them, you know, essentially saving that historical landmark and also keeping them from having to borrow as much as uh, some people did during PPP. They did not have to borrow barely anything because they were already financially prepared because of the work that we did in that five month period working together. You know, so I'm not looking to hit a tick mark. I'm not looking to hit, um, you know, a number mark. It's awesome when it happens. Don't get me wrong, because I love it. But at the same time, that's not what's going to add value to my client's relationship with me. What's going to add value is the patience that I bring to the table and, you know, and also the education that I'm bringing to them and showing them, you know, how this can help them, you know, instead of just pushing it, you know, just pushing down features and saying, okay, this is what it does. This is what it does. And da, 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 da. And you still, at the end of the day, don't understand what you're doing with me when you sign that um, document. And that's not what I want. So um, I, I feel like, you know, yes, um, banking these days, um, these days, you know, especially the last 10 years has very much been stereotypical. You know, and even our largest business owner, um, business owners have that idea of us. You know, we're just bankers here to sell them a product. Right. Um, I'll share a uh, a comment from uh, one of our watchers. This is such a refreshing approach from a commercial banker. So uh, you're doing great so far. <laughs> and, um, you, met, you you mentioned PPP. Um, can you can you kind of give give the folks out here watching an idea of what was going on behind the scenes when I think it was what late March, early yeah. April when the when the when the gavel dropped and we're go. And then yeah, literally <laughs> then first round exhausted. We didn't know about the second round. Second round came and was exhausted and then started again and is ending April 8th. Tell take us into what was going on behind the scenes that that the business owner couldn't really see, but that that would that would shed some light on the the work that our our bankers uh, were doing for the business community. Well, um, let me just say I've been in banking. Um, it's going to be thirteen years in August, and I have never seen such a more um, difficult time in banking. You know, this was something that even the bankers themselves were worried about. We were all concerned. We were like, whoa, what is COVID going to do for everyone? You know, um, when PPP came out, it was, the SBA guidelines were changing every day. They were 
you know, there was a, a new guideline that we were trying to keep up with. And um, our phones were literally ringing off the hook with, cus- with clients and customers in a panic. Like, I'm going to lose my business. What do I do? How do I, how do I, how do I, what should I do? How can I prepare? You know? And, um, we were concerned too, because businesses keep the banks going, you know what I mean? So we were like, we were scrambling around trying to figure out a plan on how to get this together. So the, the company that I particularly work with, we had, um, we had a conference call probably, um, the first week of April, I think it was like April 3rd, we had a conference call, all bankers, hands on deck, forget about anything else you were working on. So whatever, you know, consumer deals that I was working on that, that got put to the wayside, all of our underwriters, all of our, um, consumer and business underwriters, everybody were on this conference call and we were going through a crash course training. It was literally a crash course training. We built a new lending system just specifically to work PPP. And um, we all got our IDs. We all got this crash course training, you know, then um, seven o'clock that night. Well, it was supposed to be three o'clock that afternoon where the site was supposed to come up and it didn't come up. That led to hundreds of emails being thrown into my inbox. Um, it's not up yet. It's not up yet. What do I do? What do I do? What I did prior to that with my own clients that I were that I had been working with or that were in my book of business for uh, the branch that I run, I reached out to them and I told them these are the documents that I'm going to need you to have prepared when this gets live. And um, I did that because I knew the system was going to be overwhelmed. It was going to be overwhelmed. And if they weren't prepared, they may get lost in a shuffle. And so what um, so that Saturday. Right. Which was, I think, April 4th, um, we were literally up at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, We were all assigned laptops. Um, We were working from home and we were pretty much from eight o'clock until 10 o'clock that night strictly specifically processing PPP applications, making sure that all the documentation that we were supposed to be looking for was there, the calculations were correct. And then, um, you know, what started to happen is that every day through that process was a new development. There was another change. We had to start separating into smaller groups to handle the load. It wasn't just all hands on deck. Now we have to have a group for intake. We have to have a group for the approvals. We had to have a group for um, the the um, the auditing. So that was all happening all while people were flooding the system with PPP applications. And you literally, as a banker, you literally, you know, were best friends with the, an accountant because, you know, if you got an application across and it was like, hey, they don't have this together, they don't have that together, I, I need you to look at this so we can get this application through. And then, and then come back and pull that application and process it. We literally worked day and night on the PPP applications. You know, um, I'm a mother of three and, you know, um, while you know I'm making dinner, I'm still processing. I'm actually processing a PPP loan between making dinner and feeding the kids. I was up from you know eight o'clock in the morning until ten o'clock at night because we got flooded with like seven thousand applications in the month of April, just from just from that first round. So we needed everybody hands on deck. And so, um, and even the paperwork, sometimes some of the documentation, you know, um, that our clients were providing us were not well prepared. And that's when I started to, that's when um, our business owners started to see that there were some cracks in the foundations that they, they thought were strong. And, um, you know, that created an opportunity for us to step in and help even further after PPP to create a stronger foundation for them. So behind the scenes, there was a, we were, I want to, I don't want to say we were in a scramble, 
but we were in a position where we knew that we had to think quickly and we have to move quickly because of what was happening. Right, right. And I, and I think I think for a lot of folks out there, at, at least this is some of the feedback uh, that I got in, uh, in, in working with uh, some of the, especially working with some of the uh, uh, PPP folks, just to, to, for those who, who, who don't know. So uh, I've worked with Jackie um, with, when the, my company uh, has a portal to uh, to process uh, PPP loan documents, and it was set up specifically for businesses who couldn't go, couldn't go to their bank or couldn't go to any bank. So there were times when banks stopped taking mm -hmm. PPP applications. There were times when um, you could only apply at your bank, at, at a bank, if you were a customer, uh, an existing customer or client of that bank. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the things that I was hearing uh, from from these these business owners is um, it was it was in short to disparage the business banker. And what I tried to explain to them is, you know, we're all playing in the same pool here, but but the pool we're going from chlorine to salt water to above ground to to to. Yep. Uh, in ground to indoor to outdoor and and it's it's just this ever changing thing and you don't understand really what's going on behind the scenes so i'm glad you were able to uh really shed light on on that behind the scenes work uh because you know this was this was new for everybody hopefully this will never happen again this way and and i you know i think we're we're, we're pushing through it Mm -hmm. um, one of the uh, one thing I'd love to hear from you, kind of along that same vein, do you have a, a particular story? So a particular business story that that kind of rings true, kind of um, speaks to your dedication to a business and how they uh, how they started, how they how you help them prosper. It kind of uh, typifies your your uh, relationship with them. So I'll start with um, a business owner that was just starting out that actually needed PPP. Um, he did not have anything established. Um, you know, he had been, um, he's a production, he's a production manager, but never really established himself as a, an actual company. And so when um, COVID started, he realized that he needed to apply for a PPP loan, but had nothing established. So um, I, he was referred to me by one of my um, business par partners, uh, Cash, Cashier Rashid. Um, and Cash um, has sent him to me. And, um, you know, when I was working with him, I said, hey, Here's the list of things which I always have prepared a list of items for different types of businesses, LLCs, S corps, C corps, whatever, whatever it is. Um, and I do that uh, on purpose. I, I do that to make sure that um, you know my my that business customer that's coming to me, you know, knows that I'm well prepared and I already understand at least the foundation of what they need. So with him, you know, he needed to establish himself as an LLC. So I gave him the links of websites that he needed to go to to do um, to do that, the documentation that he was going to need. Right. So PPP for us ran about two to three months. So in the first month or whatever, you know, that's what he spent his time doing. I also made sure that he understood what pay, what documentation he needed to provide to me as well to get him through um to ppp through ppp so um when he came to me he had nothing established by months then he had his you know the tax he had his articles of incorporation and we needed that because in order to get ppp from us you have to establish a business account right and for every business you have to have a business account you cannot you know, you can't run it through your personal account. <laughs> Believe it or not, we still have plenty of business owners out there doing that. And so, um, you know, I set him up on that end. He applied for PPP. I pulled his application. I took him from intake all the way to approval. 
and, um, you know, and got him the funding that he needed. So essentially he was still able to stay in business. So for me, that was a success story because he wasn't coming to me, you know, saying, hey, I got $500,000 in the bank to transfer it over to you, how can you help me type thing? He literally was the, the small business owner that we talked about. We talk about small business owners all the time. This is your stereotypical business owner. You know, someone who had who is doing the work but didn't have the found, correct foundation to continue doing the work the right way, right? To be lendable to other things, to be approachable um, to other things, and to make sure that we can continue working with you. So um, for me, that was a really feel the story because, you know, he really appreciated the work that I put in on him. Even though we're all going on, I could have said, I don't have time to do this, but I took the time because I wanted to see him be successful. Like, we all should be rooting for each other, and I wanted to make sure that, you know, I didn't create a bad impression, especially about bankers, when a lot of people already have that impression and that's not what i wanted from him gotcha. okay awesome awesome uh the 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 last thing i want to touch upon and mm -hmm. you, you um the the value of partnerships so um not only just a partnership with a business banker so for for a business owner to have a relationship with a with a business banker you certainly and i think this whole ppp uh <laughs> ppp thing that we that we went through uh, <laughs> is a perfect example of what you don't want to happen and not have a relationship with a business banker uh, in in place. So it's kind of like the old saying, the 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 worst time to start building a network is when you need a network. Exactly. Uh, so, so the worst time to find a business banker and, and forge a relationship with a business banker was during COVID-19 and yes. our global pandemic yes. and, PPP and, and, and all that. Uh, but what I'd like for you to speak to the, the value and, and um, the, the value of the partnerships that the that you have that you can offer to your uh, your clients that add value to to what you do. So the thing about having a good relationship with your business banker or banker period, even on the consumer end, is that your banker knows plenty of people to help you get to where you need to be, right? We deal with accountants, we deal with bookkeepers, um, insurance providers, you know, all these key, um, all these key, um, all these key resources in order to help businesses stay in business um, and be able to do the things that they need to do, you know, or just basically save money. Many times, you know, um, when I'm working with a business, when, when I'm working with a business client, especially, and I'm asking for, you know, their income statements and things like that, there are things there that the previous accountant probably missed or um, shouldn't be doing, which makes them not lendable to the bank. And so, you know, here we are and, you know, we know probably a bunch of accountants already, you know, because they're in our networks. I have a great networking group um, called Elite BNI and we have an accountant, we have um, a bookkeeper, um, we have an insurance provider, we have real estate agents, and these are um, top notch professionals that help me as a banker provide even more resources to my clients. And that's what your banker can provide. They know so many other people, you know, out there, you know, and, and, you know, I think that's what people are missing when they, you know, talk to a banker. It's like, 
you you think of a banker, you think of where I'm parking my checking account, where I'm parking my savings account. You don't think of them as another resource for, you know, saving me money, maybe on my insurance, you know, or maybe get, letting me get a second opinion from an accountant like Robin Neese. You know, um, these are professionals, you know, some of the professionals that I work with. Um, Chris Meekins, you know, from Legal Shield, protecting your business. You know, all these individuals are there to help, you know, protect you. So I feel like, um, you know, I feel like um, that is something that, you know, people are missing when they think about a business banker or a banker in general is understanding that these are, uh, are great resources to find, you know, to find top notch people to help your business. I had a business client the the uh, about a month ago who was having problem with a merchant provider. I was able to put him in contact with a merchant provider that I knew that um, helped her get get the funding that she needed because the merchant provider that she was dealing with was blocking the approval for her to get the funding that she needed for um for the um, customers that were trying to pay her. That's holding up your business, right? So we provided, you know, through our networking group, I was able to provide her with a merchant, um, a merchant specialist that helped to get to that goal. I mean, get to um, get um, get what she needed. And, you know, essentially now she has a contract with them and now she's getting paid and being able to move forward with her business. And so these are things that, you know, again, that are, you know, just people just kind of tend to overlook when they think about dealing with a banker. And so um, I really feel like, you know, um, you really do need to have a strong relationship with your banker and understand what your banker brings to the table. And if your banker doesn't know that many people, move on to a banker that does, move on to a banker that can create that resource. You know, um, David, we have a good partnership because when I, I'm not able to do something on my end for a customer. I could bring them to you and you're going to get it done for them. You know, that's adding value to, you know, the banking relationship. Doesn't mean, you know, just because I can't do something doesn't mean I can't find somebody that can, you know. So that's something that we need to, um, you know, also kind of bring forward and tell, you know, and let the public know that that's what we're here for. We're not here for your best, you know, your fifty thousand dollars in your your money market. We're here to actually help you grow your business because in helping you grow your business, we also stay in business. Awesome. Okay. Uh, can you give can you give the viewers um, uh, an idea? We're into our second half hour now. Um, if you can give the viewers an an idea on what what commercial lending looks like now. So after PPP, what is it? What do you see as a as a forecast of what what banks are going to be looking for? Speak about your bank uh, specifically, um, if you like, and and just just give give business owners out there listening an idea of what that's going to look like because it's different now. Right. So as the economy begins to open back up, as the economy begins to cycle, are we going to get pulled back again? Um, there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, is there anything in banking now certain um, that moving forward that you can share with uh, with with business owners and, and maybe what specifically at your bank, what specifically at your branch that mm -hmm. is is kind of differentiating you from uh, from others in the industry during this time. So um, I'm glad that you brought brought up that question because it really is an important um, topic to address. So because of PPP and uh, the state of of things right now with COVID nineteen. Um, banks are actually kind of moving backwards um, in reference to lending. 
um, they are becoming even more conservative when it comes to to lending to business owners at this time. Not because we want to make things more difficult, but because we know that, say, for instance, like you know, a, a winery. You're looking to buy a winery that might not be the best. You know, the, the bank is not going to. Um, is particularly my bank. They're not going. They don't have an appetite for those types of businesses or lending to those businesses because they know because of COVID and social distancing and possibly having to go back into phase two or even phase one. Right now is not a good idea to lend to that business because they may not be able to make it through the end of the year. And that's how the banks um, are looking at it, looking at it. They're becoming more conservative. So what we're looking for is that especially if you have taken a PPP loan, understand that with the PPP loan, that is going to be counted into your debt to income. So that's something that, um, you know, a lot of business owners weren't aware of when they applied for PPP, even though it is forgivable by the government, by the banks, on the other hand, that's still counted into your debt to income. So um, what we are looking at or what we're doing is right now, the focus is to consolidate. The focus is to consolidate as much as we can, if we can, in order to make you more lendable to a conservative, a more conservative lender. If you're if you're lendable to the most conservative lender, anybody can give you a loan. But you know, if you come to us and you know your debt to income level is too high because of PPP, then we got to look at um, some other options that we can help you with in order to make you more lendable and be able to approve the request that you're looking for. We're still looking at 2018 and 19, um, 19 tax returns, and um, we're still looking at the P&Ls, um, which is something that a lot of people were missing, um, were missing during PPP. We were looking at all of that. Um, we're, I know many people have filed for extensions, but I'm going to say this, if you're looking for a loan or looking to renew an existing loan that you already have, especially with our institution, you need to have 19 done already. So if your accountant or you have extended that for any reason, it's, it's, I strongly suggest that you start, you know, um, start working on that. And then, um, what else are we, um, are we looking for? I'm going to say, I'm going to say, um, your balance sheet, you know, um, make sure that you are fully, you know, that you're not keeping, you know, um, I'm going to say, cause some people, um, hate to divulge more information to us, even though you're looking for a loan and we're asking all these financial questions. Um, they hate to tell us everything that they have financially. Don't hide it now. If you hide it now, all I'm going to say is that it's not going to make a good case for us when we have to make an exception in approving your loan. Okay. Be as open as you can with your lender about your financial situation, because that helps us as lenders when we are, you know, going back and forth with our underwriters, we can make a strong case for you and get your loan approved. But if you're keeping information from us about deposits and um, deposits at other institutions or what you have invested with, you know, um, with your investors and we're trying to approve a loan for you, that's going to make it very difficult for us if we don't have that, you know, that financial background to kind of use as a little dangle in front of our um, as a, a little bit of bait in front of our um our underwriters in order to get you approved. So I'm just going to say that, you know, you, you need to divulge that information. You need to be more open more now than ever during COVID because banks are becoming more strict only because, you know, they're also trying to protect their book of business as well and not go under by lending to people that may not be in business by the end of the year 
or they feel that may not be in business at the end of the year. Real estate, commercial real estate is still pretty strong in that area is still going strong. So we don't have an, we don't have um, reservations about that. But what we do have reservations about are like, you know, um, are like people are like restaurants and, um, you know, places where, you know, the places where your revenue or your profits come mostly from social gatherings and, and things like that. So that's something that the bank right now does not have an appetite for. Okay. Um, a couple of questions came in kind of along, kind of along that, that same vein uh, regarding industry and <laughs> regarding credit. So um, are there any industries that you that your, your bank you're not willing to look at, uh, you're not comfortable with? And um, how does credit score play into uh, play into that as well? Um, are the, the the credit restrictions the same? Um, have they changed? And and speaking about the uh, the different industries. So um, and so some of the different industries that the bank really is not going to be um, keen on right now are restaurants and um, are um, like places like wineries. Like I said, the, they don't have a strong appetite for that. Um, so they're not looking for that. They also, some banks have also raised their credit criteria. So the credit criteria, you know, your minimum credit score um, could be a 640. Now they've raised that to 660. So um, that has also been raised. And, and again, they're, they're being more conservative for a reason because they're trying to protect their book of business. So, um, you know, these are things that, um, that we're looking at. We have some restaurants that are looking for lines of credits and things like that to keep things going. But um, again, the banks are cautious uh, on doing that unless you're very well established and you have um, strong financial records um, that we're looking at, that we're providing to our underwriters, uh, the bank is most likely not going to entertain that at this time. Okay. All right. That's awesome. We're looking at um, a couple of, uh, a, a couple of more questions. Um, has, has banking changed forever? That's yes. An interesting question. Yes, it has. It, it yeah. has. Banking has changed forever. It is not. It is definitely um, not what it was three, four months ago. You know, four months ago, we were going out visiting businesses, pounding the pavement. You know, visiting our clients, um, in person meetings. Um, you know, we were doing all of that. Now everything, just about everything is virtual, you know, um, we're making more exceptions than ever as to, you know, how we go about, you know, even opening up a business account, you know, usually we used to tell you, you got to be here in person. Well, because of COVID, you can't be here in person. So how do we still get that done? Right. Um, you know, so we're doing we're doing a lot of virtual appointments. We are doing um, a lot of you know just correspondence through email. You know, um, making sure that you know thing we have our ducks in a row there. Um, the way lending looks right now, I'm not sure if they're ever. You know, they went back to a more conservative outlook. That may change. Um, you know, late on, later on down the line, but it's definitely not going to change by the end of this year. It's probably going to stay about the same until things change with COVID. Um, so in reference to um, banking, yeah, it has changed for forever. I think this is the new norm going forward. You're going to see a whole lot more um, things done virtually. You will see, um, you know, more access to, you know, online financial solutions um, uh, and things like that, providing more just online learning about financial resources, which my company provides as well. And you don't have to bank with us to get 
those financial resources either. Um, it's something called bon Bonsai. It's something that we um, at our bank um, decided to provide to the public. And it offers you resources, you know, as a business owner through COVID. It offers you resources um, as a parent, you know, trying to homeschool your, um, your children or resources on how to nav navigate um, um, being out of work. So the bank is changing its approach to financial education as well. We are doing things more, um, more we're doing things virtually in order to reach a broader, um, a broader base of customers as well, because we know, you know, essentially, you know, sitting down in front of a banker um, eventually may not be an option. You know, we're hoping that that is not the case, but we're also preparing ourselves just in case that may be the norm for for quite for quite a while. Awesome. Okay, I'm adding uh, a couple things to the chat as we are as we're chatting. <laughs> so I, I put in your the, the quote that you kind of live by um, when you are dealing with your uh, your business banker, uh, your your business clients. Let me be the catalyst to grow your business. That's the one that you shared with me, mm -hmm. as, well as, as as well as your direct line for folks to contact you if they are, are looking for a banker, if they're looking to do to do business with you. Um, as we as we wrap up, um, can you speak to spe specifically why that quote resonates with you? Um, I'm sorry, repeat that last part. Why that quote resonates with you so so the let me be the catalyst to grow your business why that particular quote why you've come up with that and why that resonates with you and how you deal with your your business clients because as a banker you know we talked about earlier being product pushers and um you know being see, seen as salespeople. and for me being a um the catalyst to help grow your business that's not a salesperson, you know what I mean? Salesperson, there's a beginning, middle and end. With us, there is no end, you know? With us, we're pro continually providing you information that's gonna help you make better choices for your business and essentially increase your profits, um, increase the revenue, and also keep you in the community and keep you and keep your business growing. And that's what a catalyst does. It just gives you that little push that you need in order to keep going. Right. Um, and so that's what we want to be. We want to be that boost to your business. And that is the perfect term for me that I can best use to describe as to what I do or what um, what I bring to the table to my business owner is giving them that boost that they need to to make better decisions for their business. Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, well, we have we have no more questions that have come through the chat, um, and uh, we're, we're about at the at, at the end of our time. So I so I really appreciate you coming on. Congratulations, you will you will forever be the first <laughs> business banker boss uh, that that we have uh, that, that that we have interviewed and we have spoken to. So congratulations, thank you for the uh, the work you do for the small business community. Thank you for the work um, you do um, at your at your branch. Uh, if you could just leave us with, I put your direct phone number in, in the chat. Is there any other contact info that uh, you'd like to share with the folks before we before we sign off? And I also put in uh, to uh, follow you. You can follow uh, Ms. Anthony on LinkedIn. So I put in a, a link for her. <laughs> I'm not even going to play like that. For her LinkedIn, uh, her LinkedIn account. Uh, <laughs> So just, I was gonna say LinkedIn, but no, that's <laughs> probably too soon for that. So her LinkedIn account and um, anything else you wanna share with uh, the folks out there in terms of contact information and, and how the best way to get in contact with you. 
So um, I'm providing you with my cell number, okay? And I'm also gonna provide you with my office number, but my cell is probably the best way to catch me because um, I'm always on the go. <laughs> so I'm going to provide you with that. And if you call me, then I'll give you, you know, my um, my office email and provide you with my personal email, um, you know, if it gets to that point. But you can always reach me on my cell and then my office number, my direct line is there. Um, but, um, you know, those are the best ways to really contact me. And, um, you know, and I just also want to say, too, you know, um, like I said, I never thought that I would be a banker. I never thought that I would be um, in this type of uh, career. I, I actually never liked numbers. And look at me, I'm a banker. And um, and I love what I do. And it, you know, and it brings so much value to, you know, helping people bring so much value to what I do. You know, I, every time I help somebody, it's just a win-win for me. It's a win for them, but it, it feels good. And I never thought as a banker that I would be doing, you know, I'd be helping so many people in that way. And also myself, you know, just the level of education that I, I, I was able to gain from this as a first generation, you know, immigrant um, here in the States, I just really feel like this is something that all of our communities need. We need a strong foundation banking wise. We need a strong foundation. This is the only way our our communities, no matter what community you come from, will thrive, okay? Having strong bankers in that in, in your community is what is going to help that community grow. So if there are financial struggles in that community, you need to find a banker that's going to help get you get your community where it needs to be. And that is what me, David, folks like, you know, um, like myself want to do. So if you're listening to this now, you need to reach out to your banker. You need to ask them, what are they doing to keep you in business and in, in your community? And if they can't give you an answer, you have my cell phone. Give me a call. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Jackie. I want to put the office phone number in the in the chat. What is that, please? Do you want to put it in the chat? Sure. Yeah, I did. I think. Oh, is, is it? I, I guess it's private, right? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> OK, so um, it's 804-254-4128. I may not see it on my end. But um, oh, yeah, I put my cell phone and I put my um office number in the chat, but I guess I so. Guess I put I, so all that stuff I, I put it in on my end, um, uh -huh. but it'll and if if guys, if you don't get that through the chat, it's it's on uh, it's on the card that was a that was attached to the event. So the, the little the little short video clip that's attached to the event, all of uh. Ms. Anthony's uh, contact information is there. So, uh, but, I, but I, I think it will have uh, shown up in the chat as well. Gotcha. And let's um, let just make sure of that. Just while we're still on. Mm -hmm. Hang on. <clears throat> yep, we're good to go. No problem at all. So everything everything is there. Um, just a, 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 a tech issue going on. Excuse me one second. You're, you're fired, by the way. You're fired. Okay, <laughs> just, just fired my tech guy. So that's it. So I'm looking for a new tech guy. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you got to give me the details of, of <laughs> how this stuff works or else we're live here. Okay, so come on. Gotcha. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in. This was this was great, Jackie. Thank you uh, for being the first business banker boss. We're looking to uh, continue to do this. Look for the next uh, business banker boss episode two um, coming next week. It's going to be live. We're going to be making the announcement of who that is. 
uh, and uh, we will we will see you we will see you then next week. As for now, uh, again, thank you, Jackie. Thank you, everyone. I'm David Wilson, managing principal of Fund You Up. Uh, we will uh, we will see you next time. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. All right. Thank you, David. You thank got you. it. Jackie. Have a great day. Thank you. All right. You too.